There is a really neat problem called the longest common substring problem, or its generalization, the k-common substring problem, which is really what I want to focus on today. First, let's state the problem and then discuss multiple ways of solving it. Suppose we have n strings. How do we find the longest common substring shared between at least k of them, with k being anywhere from 2 to n, the number of strings? As an example, consider the three strings, s1, s2, and s3, with the value of k equal to 2 meaning that we want a minimum of two strings from our pool of three strings to share the longest common substring between them. In this situation, the longest common substring is BCA, but note that the longest common substring is not required to be unique because there can be multiple. The traditional approach to solving this problem is to employ a technique called dynamic programming which can solve the problem in a time complexity equal to the product of the string lengths. Obviously, this method can get unwieldy very quickly, and you should avoid using it whenever possible. A far superior approach, and the way to solve this problem, is to use a suffix array, which can find the solution in linear time proportional to the sum of the string lengths. So, how do we do this? How do we use a suffix array to solve the longest common substring problem? Let's consider the three strings we saw earlier, S1, S2, and S3. What we will first want to do is concatenate them all together into a larger string, which I will call T, which is short for text. However, when doing this, we must be careful and place unique sentinel values between our strings. We need to do this for multiple reasons, but the main one being that we must avoid any intermingling of suffixes when we construct the suffix array. Additionally, I would like to note that these sentinel values need to be lexicographically less than any of the characters contained in any of our strings. So in the ASCII table, the pound sign, the dollar sign, and the percent sign are all less than any alphabetic character contained within S1, S2, and S3. So we're good in doing the concatenation. Once we have the string T, we are able to construct the suffix array for T. This procedure can be accomplished in linear time with a linear suffix array construction algorithm. You will notice that on this slide, I am displaying both the LCP array values on the leftmost column and the sorted suffixes of T as they would appear in the suffix array on the right column. I also gave each suffix a certain color to match it with the original string it belongs to. In this slide, you can see that the suffixes starting with sentinel values got sorted to the top because they were lexicographically less than all the characters in the string, and this is to be expected. For our purposes, we want to ignore them because we injected them into the string T ourselves. So back to the central problem. How do we find the longest common substring of K strings? given that we now have the suffix array and the LCP array constructed. The answer is we're going to look for K strings, each of different colors whom share the largest LCP value. Let's do an example with K equals 3. Since K equals 3 and we have three strings, this means that we need one string of each color. We can achieve a maximum of two if we select the following three adjacent suffixes. Notice that each of them is a different color, meaning that they came from different original strings, and that the minimum LCP value in the selected window is two. Note that we must ignore the first entry in the window. 
This means that the longest common substring solution is the string CA of length 2, which is shared amongst all three of S1, S2, and S3. Let's do another example, but this time let's change the value of k to be equal to 2. Since k equals 2, we want to have two suffixes of different colors and the maximum longest common prefix value between them. In this case, there is a unique solution, which is the string bca with a length of 3 shared between s1 and s2, but not s3. So far, we've covered only some trivial cases. Things get much messier when not all the different colors you need are exactly adjacent with each other. A trick we will use to overcome this will be to use a sliding window technique to capture the correct amount of suffix colors. Here's what we'll do. At each step, we'll adjust the bottom or the top endpoint so that the window contains exactly k suffixes of different colors. Once we have a valid window with the correct amount of colors, we'll want to query the minimum LCP value for that window range. In the picture below, you can see that this value is 2, because the minimum value in the LCP array for that window is 2. Again, ignore the first entry, which is 5. Since the minimum value for that window is 2, all the suffixes in that window do share the prefix ag, which has length of 2, as we would expect. Here are some more details on how we are actually going to perform the query to obtain the minimum LCP value on the current window we are considering. Turns out that this is a pretty popular problem and it can be solved in a variety of ways. Since we're dealing with a sliding window and not just any arbitrary range query, we can use a linear solution from the minimum sliding range query problem to obtain the value we want. Alternatively, I would recommend using a minimum range query data structure, such as a segment tree, to perform logarithmic range queries on the LCP array. This is theoretically a little slower, but it is much easier to implement, in my opinion. So to implement the sliding window, we will also need an additional data structure to keep track of the colors in our window. I recommend using a hash table for this task. On the bottom left, I drew a table to indicate how much of each color we are capturing in the current window. A valid window will require at least k or more columns to have a value greater than zero. In the example that will follow, let's suppose that k equals three, meaning all three colors will need to be present in our window for a valid query to occur. By a query, I mean querying the LCP array for the minimum value in the current window and then possibly updating the best longest common substring value found so far. Right now, you can see that our window is missing some blue. So our rule when we're missing a certain color is to expand the window down, and when we already meet the criteria, we shrink the window down. So let's expand our window downwards to capture some blue. Now we have enough blue and enough of each color to do a valid query. When we perform the query, we would see that the longest common substring for the window we are in will have length 3, representing the string AAG. Now, since we have enough of each color, we can then reduce the window size. I removed one green suffix and we still have at least one of each color, so we can again perform a query to find out that we get the same result as last time. Now I shrank the window even more and now we don't have enough green. So we cannot perform a valid query here. 
what we need to do is expand the window downwards until we hit a green suffix. Luckily, there was a green suffix right there, and we can perform a query to attempt to update the best longest common substring value found so far. In this window, the longest common substring is only of length 1, so the longest common substring for this window is the string A, which is not as long as the longest co common substring we found before, which was AAG of length 3, so we can ignore this one and keep searching. Now we shrink the interval and we're short one color and that is red. Let's expand downwards until we reach a red suffix. So we expand and find a blue suffix. This is not what we wanted, so let's keep searching. Then expand and find a green suffix and keep doing this until a red suffix is reached. This video is getting a little long, so I'm going to break it up here and in the next video, we'll look at a full example of this method being applied. However, in the meantime, if you're looking for a challenge regarding the longest common substring problem, make sure to check out the Lifeforms problem on the CAS website. And if you're looking for an implementation of the longest common substring algorithm as I just described, make sure to check out my algorithms repository at github.com slash William Fizet slash algorithms. And thank you for watching.